Hello. In this video, we're going to start solving homogeneous linear systems with constant coefficients. Uh, that's actually what we're going to spend the rest of the course on. Um, the last few videos for this course will cover this topic. Um, so I'm just going to write that down because that's what I put in my notes. Uh, the rest of the course. So yeah, so we're going to spend the rest of the course covering homogeneous linear systems of differential equations with constant coefficients. Um, they have the form x prime equals ax, where a is a constant matrix. So it's made up of constants. OK, so that's as opposed to in the previous video, uh, when we went over theory of systems of differential equations, we looked at x prime equals px. Uh, and that p, that represented um, functions. Like the idea is that you could have coefficient functions that would be multiplied by your, uh, your vector here that represents the functions that you're trying to go through and find that would solve the differential equation. OK, so in this case, We've replaced the P with an A, and the difference is, is that we're saying that A is a constant matrix, so no functions. We just have constant coefficients, OK? And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off by noting, note how similar this is to the differential equation y prime equals a y. OK, so if you look at these, you can see how similar they look. Here we have uh, x bar. This represents a, a vector. So we've got a, a vector um, with multiple multiple variables, multiple functions that we're trying to go through and find satisfy the differential equation. Uh, whereas here, we just have a single uh, variable y, which represents a single function that we're trying to go through and solve um, that will satisfy the differential equation. Um, and we did solve this differential equation earlier in the semester. Uh, when we went through and solved it, we solved it. You can solve it by um, separation, by going through separable. Um, and if you solve it, if you solve it, you end up getting you end up getting y equals c e to the a t. Okay, um, so the 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 differential equation that you'd plug into to, sorry, the function that you'd plug into this differential equation that will satisfy it is going to be an exponential function. So, and the reason is, if you think about this, if you look at it, so you're, you're being asked, what function would you take the derivative of that would end up equaling a constant times that function? And that's an exponential function. That's the, that's the, the type of function that you'd have. Um, the fact that, the fact that this has this, you know, the fact that this differential equation has this as a solution and the fact that it's similar in structure to this is actually going to inspire the method that we're going to use to go through and solve these homogeneous linear systems. So that's why we're going through and talking about it. Um, so the, let's see here. 
Um, so this, this solution uh, inspires the method that we're going to use. All right, and the way in which it does that is what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to guess at the format for the solution. And then there's going to be some consequences to that guess that once we go through and you know, figure out how to handle them, that will end up uh, enabling us to go through and solve the differential equation. OK, so, uh, so let's say that. So, so we're going to start and say, all right, so let's say we've got this, we're given this. And we'd like to go through and solve it. And what we're going to do is we're going to guess the solution looks something like a, you know, something like this, a variation of this, a variation of our of our solution to the to the uh, first order differential equation that we had earlier. Um, the difference is, is we want to take this this solution here and we want to change it over so that it works for uh, multiple. Um, functions. So we, we needed to have a, um, a, a matrix aspect to it, a vector aspect to it. Uh, and so what we do is we're going to go through and guess that our that the solution is, could be of the form x equals, I think it's xi, I don't remember, I was supposed to look that up and I forgot, um, something like that. Uh, we're going to guess the solution it looks like this uh, for some some xi and for some r. All right, so if we had the xi and the r, that would give us a specific solution that we would end up plugging into the differential equation and making it making it true, uh, assuming our guess is accurate. Assuming our guess is, is accurate that we could go through and solve this differential equation with this form, then if we had the xi and we had the r, we could plug them in and then they and then that solution would work if we put it into the differential equation. OK, all right, so um, to go through and figure out what the consequences of this guess are, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate it to figure out what x prime would be. Uh, if we did that, so xi is just a, is a, is just a vector. Um, it's made up of constants. Um, so there's no, the derivative there is you're just going to kind of ignore that part. The derivative is not going to affect that part. And so our, our focus is going to be on differentiating this. And we're differentiating here with respect to t. So if you differentiate e to the rt with respect to t, you get r e to the rt. Okay. And so now if we take our guess and the consequence of it, and we take both of those things and plug them in to the differential equation, uh, what, what happens? Let's see what happens. Uh, so we're going to get we're going to put we're going to put this guy in place of the x prime. So we'll have xi r e to the r t a, and then we're going to put this in place of the x. Okay, and so we end up with this equation. If you go through and look at this equation. Uh, we've got e to the rt on both sides. So you could just divide both sides by that e to the rt, and it's going to go away. Right? And then we're and then I'm going to I'm going to change the order around here intentionally. Uh, just going to flip-flop these. And I'll explain why in a second. And I'm going to change the order on this guy too. Uh, and so now if you look at this, so what we're looking for is we're looking for the r and the xi that you could plug in that would make this equation true. All right, so we want to know if we took matrix A and multiplied it by vector uh, xi, uh, would we get uh, scalar r times vector xi? All right, and if you've watched the previous videos um, or you're up on your linear algebra, uh, then, then something should jump out at you here. This is the eigenvalue eigenvector problem.
Okay, so uh, the eigenvalue eigenvector problem is you're looking for when could you multiply a matrix times a vector and get a scalar times a vector. Uh, and that's exactly the situation that we ended up as a consequence of our guess. So if we could go through and solve this eigenvalue eigenvector problem, that would get us the R, which is the eigenvalue, and it would get us the xi, which is the eigenvector that we could plug in that would make this true, which would make this true, uh, which would mean, which would make it so that if you took this and plugged it in, it would make it true. So we would end up solving the system of differential equations just by going through and finding the R and finding the xi. Okay, so um, that's what our goal is going to be. So that and that and that's going to be and that's going to be it. Uh, so it's really that simple as to go through and solve a system of differential equations with constant coefficients. You just end up going through and solving the eigenvalue eigenvector problem. So let's go ahead and try an example so that we can see this in action. So let's suppose we had x prime. times x. And so this is this is it has the same format. I just have replaced the a with an actual matrix. And so we want to go through and solve this system. All right, so let's start off by we're going to guess or we're going to let uh, x equal xi e to the rt. OK, uh, if we do that, then the consequence is we're going to end up with xi r e to the rt on the left, right? That's what we said the derivative of x prime was. And then we'll have 1, 1, 4, 1 times xi e to the rt. And then just like before, we can go through and cancel e to the rts here. And so this guy right here, this is a xi equals r xi. So this has does have that format. Okay, so we can just note right that, we, that this is so far so good. Uh, we're getting the format that we expected. All right, so to go through and solve the eigenvalue eigenvector problem, um, what you're going to do is you're going to move the r xi over to the same side. And so I'm going to kind of rearrange this and rewrite it. So we're going to end up with one, one, four, one, all right, uh, times xi minus r times xi equals zero. All right, and then you can go through and uh, if you multiply r by the identity matrix, you can then go through and combine it with the a uh, by, you know, in the following way. All right, so you end up with one minus r, one, for one minus r uh, times xi equals uh, zero, zero vector. OK. And so once we get to this point, we're looking for, so if, if this, uh, this, so this right here in, in the eigenvalue, I get this kind of a little bit of a review from I, yeah, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So this is a minus r i. Okay. Um, if the determinant of this were not zero, if this were invertible, then then if you, if that were the case, then xi would end up being zero, right? If this were invertible, then you could multiply by the inverse on both sides. You'd get zero times the inverse, and zero times the inverse would be zero. So you get xi equals zero. Now we don't want xi to be zero. We're looking for solutions other than xi equals zero. All right, and so we want the determinant to equal zero. So you want to go through and take the determinant of one minus r one for one minus r, and we want that to equal zero. And if you do that, uh, the determinant of two by two matrix, you take this times this minus this times this. So we're going to have one minus r times one minus r minus four equals zero, multiply this out, you get r squared minus 2r plus 1 minus 4 equals zero. And then we get r squared minus 2r 
minus three equals zero. And so this gives us that um, r minus three, r plus one equals zero. And so we get r equals three or negative one. Okay, so I actually let me stop here, pause just for a moment. Uh, so one, one thing to note, right, is that we have two different r values. Um, it's going to turn out that the format for the solution, right? So this, all the, the derivation that we went through and did here, uh, there's going to be some subtle differences depending upon whether you get two different R values, whether you get same, same R value that's repeated, or whether you end up getting complex conjugates. So this kind of harkens back to uh, to previous videos that were on second order differential equations. So it's going to turn out that there are different formats to the solution and you do slightly different things depending upon what the, um, you know, what R values you end up getting, what eigenvalues, because the R values are the eigenvalues, what eigenvalues that you end up getting. Um, and so that's actually why there are multiple videos here. The first video, uh, this one on homogeneous linear systems of equations with constant coefficients, um, this one deals with when we have two different values. That's the simplest case, just like back in second order differential equations. That's the simplest case. And then we end up getting increasingly complicated when we look at uh, when we have complex eigenvalues or when we have a repeated eigenvalue. OK, so uh, I just wanted to mention that right now, right here, that if you do go through and you solve one of these and you get uh, a single uh, eigenvalue, a single R value, uh, then you are going to do something different than what I'm about to do, uh, and that will be covered in later videos. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to assume moving forward that you have two eigenvalues uh, that are different, like, like the situation that we have here. So uh, if we start off with r equals three to go through and find the eigenvectors, um, what you, need, what you need to do is take r equals three, plug it in to this. We're going to create this equation. And then once you've got this equation here, we're going to go through and solve for what uh, xi is. We're going to solve for the eigenvector. All right, so actually, let's just do it right here. So one minus three, we're going to get, so we're going to start with off r equals three. So one minus three would be negative two. So we have negative two, one, and then four, negative two. Okay, uh, and so to go through and solve this, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift over from this matrix equation to an aug to an augmented matrix, and this is something that you can do. Uh, if you could really think of it in terms of a probably a couple steps that you'd want to do to do it, but um, I'm just telling you you can go through and you can do this. All right, the idea is that this this system that you have here, this is a system of equations. This system of equation, this, this way of writing the system of equations, um, so there's two options for writing a system of equations. You can either go through and you can either turn it into an augmented matrix or you can turn it into a matrix equation. And so essentially you could think about if you took this, uh, this matrix equation, turned it back into its system equivalent and then went to the augmented matrix, this is what you'd get. So that's what I meant by if you did a couple of steps, you could get to here. And it's just it's going to make it a lot easier for us to go through and solve the system if we rewrite it in this form instead of uh, this form. All right. And once you're here, you can go through and do row reduction. So if we take the first line here and multiply it by negative 1 half, we're going to get 1, negative 1 half, 0. Uh, and then if you take negative 4 times this and add it to this, you're going to get an all zero row. That should always happen. If it doesn't happen, then that's because you've made a mistake. All right, and so now we're in this form. Now we're going to change over to the system of equations form. So that would be, you're going to, these are going to be the coefficients of your xi values. Uh, so we're going to have one xi one minus one half xi two equals zero. And then when you have an all zero row, you're going to have, you, you can represent that as xi2 equals xi2. 
Okay, so you have a free variable here and the free variable uh, is gonna be the, the value um, that, that, that you're missing, right? So you have, you have Xi1 rep is represented in this column. And so we're missing our Xi2. And so that's why we set Xi2 equal to Xi2. All right, and then from there, you can go through and solve for Xi1. And that equals one half Xi2. And then we have Xi2 equals Xi2. And then combined these two things get us Xi itself. And what is Xi itself? It's one half and one times, actually, let me do this just in case, uh, just, just in case, and then we get a little lost there. Um, what is uh, Xi? It's Xi one over Xi two. And that is Xi one is one half, Xi two is one times Xi two. All right, and so this gives us what Xi two is. And so now if we take our R value and our Xi value that we just got and our format that we said that the solution was and we put all of them together, we will get a solution to the differential equation, to the system of differential equations. So a solution, we're gonna call this our first solution and it's gonna be one half one times E to the three T. All right, so again, you can see what I'm doing. I, I'm taking this format here. We said that we're gonna let X equal this and we're just trying to find the Xi and find the R that we could plug into this, okay? Um, and then by you know, using this to go through and solve everything up to this point, uh, whatever we get is gonna work on the differential equation. All right, so this should work on the differential equation. And you could go through and check that, right? So let's go through and check that, check to see whether this does end up working. Now it should work again, because we used this assumption to go through and generate all this other stuff. So if this assumption, if the consequence of it was, was all of this stuff, then that means that when we plug it into the system of differential equations, it should work. All right, so let's do that on the next page. So we're go, let's go ahead and just check. So we can go through and say X one prime, so x1 prime would be the derivative of this. So this is just has scalars in it. So that's not going to change. So we're going to get this times 3e to the 3t. OK. Um, and then uh, so we know what x1 without the prime is. It's just that. 3t. And then what we were looking for is we were looking for uh, we're looking for something that satisfies this. So we need 1411. Okay. And then the question is we took those and plugged them in here. Would it work? So let's try it. All right, so we've got x prime is this. So we're going to have 1 half 1, 3 e to the 3t. And then does that equal 1, 1, 4, 1 times this, which is what x is. That's going to be times 1 half 1 e to the 3t. And we could multiply this out, 1 half 1 times 3 e, 3 e to the 3t. And what's that going to equal? Take this and multiply it by multiply it by 1, 1, 4, 1. And so when we do that, we're going to get 1 half plus 1. That's going to be 3 halves. And then we're going to have 1 half times 4. That's 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. And then does one half one times three times e to the three t equals three halves over three e to the three t? Oh uh, yeah, it does. You take the three and multiply it by the scalar and it works. Okay, and so the first solution we got here does work. Okay, uh, so I'm just remember I just remembered that there was one other change that I wanted to make this make to this. So um, depending upon 
depending upon how you're going through and taking the class, I'm trying to make this video for anybody who's watching. Uh, for my specifically for my class who's going through and using WebAssign um, for their homework, uh, your the the homework may not accept one half over one. Instead, you may, may need to go through and get rid of the fraction. Okay, so uh, since this is since xi is one half one times xi two, and xi two could be anything, uh, what you can do is you can go through and rewrite this by saying, like, let's say xi two equals two t or something like that. And so you could take this and you could multiply it by two to clear out the fractions, right? If you took one half and multiplied by two, you get one. You take one, multiply it by two, you get two. And so this could equal one two times. T. And so another possibility, an alternative possibility for our solution would be uh, one and two. And um, if you can check it again, if you really want to, it, it works. Um, it, as long as you have the ratio of one half to one for this, for your eigenvector, um, it is going to, it's going to, it's going to work. It's going to work when you plug it into the system of differential equations, and this is going to be our first solution. Uh, it's, it's technically, it's all multiples of this, which we will take care of when we get to the point where we're going through and combining our two solutions, because we've got to go through and find a second one. Uh, when we find the second solution, we'll go through and we'll do linear combinations of them using the theorems, you know, from the last video. Right, there was a reason that we covered that stuff in the last video. All right, let's go through and find the second solution. So for the second solution, we have r equals negative one. So you get two, one, four, two, and you can go ahead and check that. Uh, times i equals the zero vector. And now I'm gonna rewrite this into an augmented matrix. So two, one, zero, four, two, zero. All right, and then we're gonna go through and do our row reduction. So we can multiply this first row by one, by one half, and you're gonna get one, one half, zero. And then if you take negative four times this and add it to the second one, you'll get an all zero row, which is what should happen every time. All right, and now if we change this back over to our system format, this is going to be xi1 plus 1 half xi2 equals 0, and then we get xi2 equals xi2, and this turns into xi1 equals negative 1 half xi2, and then xi2, <laughs> my xi's are getting messier and messier as the video goes on, equals i2. And then you could rewrite this. This is i equals negative 1 half 1 times xi2. And then just like we did in the last one, you could go through and clear out the fractions by multiplying by 2. And so we'd get negative one, two. Times T. All right, and so this is our eigenvalue. This is our eigenvector. If you put those together, you'll get the second solution. So not three, the eigenvalue is supposed to go in the exponent here. So negative, negative T. And just like the previous example, you could go through and you could check that it works if you'd like. Um, it should, it does work. It does work if you plug it in, assuming we didn't make any mistakes. And so once we've got our second solution, so you recall in the last video, we said if we have two solutions to the system of differential equations, then we should be able to combine them uh, to get additional solutions. So if we go through and combine them, we would say that C1 times the first solution which is 1, 2, e to the 3t. That's also going to be a solution and C2 
times negative one, two, that's also going to be a solution, right? So if you've got two solutions to the system, you can take all the linear combinations of them and you can generate additional solutions, which is what we've done here. So we took the first solution and the second solution and we made, took linear combinations of them. That's what the C1 and the C2 uh, represent here. Okay, and so uh, assuming the X1 and the X2 are separately solutions, then these should also be solutions. And then at some point the question comes up, well, you know, do we have enough? Do we have all of the solutions? Uh, you know, another way of looking at it is, is are these solutions different enough that they go through and they generate all of the solutions? All right, so how could we check? How do we go through and check? Do we have all the solutions? Uh, the way that you can go through and check is you can calculate the Ronskin. So you take the Ron skin of those two solutions. So what is the Ron skin when it comes to systems of differential equations? What you want to do is you want to go through and create a matrix that is made up from the each of the these um, the solution vectors as columns. All right. So what we want to do is we want to go through and create a matrix that has our solutions. Right. This is x one. And this is x2. I want to check, we want to create a matrix with those. So let's do that. So, and to do that, you, you do need to take your vector here and multiply it by uh, the function, because we want to have functions in, in our matrix. So we're going to have e to the 3t and 2e to the 3t. And then take this guy and multiply it by that one. We're going to have negative e to the negative t and 2e to the negative t. OK, so to go through and calculate the Ronskin when it comes to so solutions for a system of differential equations is you need to take your solutions, create a matrix with them, and then we're going to go through and check that the determinant of that is not equal to 0. So if you go back to second order differential equations, you went through and you calculated a Ronskin and the Ronskin had to not be zero. The same thing is true here. Okay, so if we go through and calculate the determinant e to the 3t times 2e to the negative t, that is going to produce 2e to the 2t. And then we're going to have minus uh, the product of these two. So that's going to be another 2e to the 2t. And so that ends up equaling 4e to the 2t and 4e to the 2t is not equal to zero, right? There's no, there's no, no solution here that we could plug in where this would equal zero. Um, and so what does that tell us? It tells us that the Ronskin is not equal to zero and that we do have all solutions. All right, uh, in other words, this thing here, this is the general solution. This is our general solution to our differential equation. And these two solutions that we found, they form a fundamental set, all right? So a fundamental set of solutions is a set whose linear combinations get you all the solutions. A fundamental set is a set whose Ron skin is not equal to zero. Okay, those are, are ways of saying the exact same thing. Okay, and so this is the solution to the differential equation. All right, so a cool thing that you can do with these is we can go through and we can sketch the behavior of the solution. So that's what we're going to do next. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through and sketch it on what's called uh, um, an x1, x2 plane. So an x1, x2 plane is just what it sounds like. It's a, a, a coordinate plane that's made up of x1 and x2. And if you're, and if you're wondering, well, what, what is x1 and x2? Well, if you go through and take your 
um, your solution vector here and you were to write it out, right? What does it look like if you break it up? It's x1 and x2. The top component is x1 and the bottom component is x2. Okay, and so we can go through and we can we can go through and find uh, x1 and x2 and use that information to go through and figure out how to do a, a sketch. All right, so how do we do that? So let's start off by just actually just transcribing that previous page over so that it just makes it a little bit easier. So we've got x equals x1 over x2. And we know that equals c1 times, uh, what was it? I already forgot. Um, 1, 2, e to the 3t plus c2, negative 1, 2 times e to the negative t. OK. All right, and so what we want is we want to we want to go through and use this equation that we've got here to to find information about the relationship between x one and x two. Just looking at the way that it is, it's actually very difficult to go through and do that. Um, but so what we need to do is we need to simplify this, and the way that you can do that is you can go through and you can set one of the two variable one of the two coefficients here, these constant coefficients that represent the the linear combinations, you can set one of them equal to zero, and then things get a lot simpler. So let's go through and do that. So for, start off by saying we're going to let C2 equal zero. If we let C2 equal zero, then we end up with x1 over x2 equals C1 times 1 over 2 e to the 3t. Right, so if C2 equals zero, th then that just drops this away and we just get this guy. And from this, we can go through and say X1 equals C1 times E to the 3T, right? So X1 equals this times this times that, and then X2 equals this times this times that. So we're gonna get two C1 E to the 3T. And now if you take a look at these, right, if you went through and multiplied this top one through by two, you'd get 2x1 is 2c1 e to the 3t. And then you could see both of these have 2c1 e to the 3t, and we can set those equal. So we could go through and say x2 equals 2 times x1. And this on our x2, x1 plane is just a line, right? It's the line that goes through the origin and has a slope of positive 2. Up one, up two, over one. All right, and so what this line represents here is it represents our first solution. This is x1, right? Because that was what this first solution, this was x1, okay? And so, uh, one thing to be clear about here, though, is that there is a T that's in here. And then if you went through and changed that T, it would change your values for X1 and X2. So this is a parametric equation. We have X1 and X2 are defined in terms of a third variable. And with parametric equations, they change over T. And so if you go through and have T increase, right? So as T gets bigger, e to the 3t is going to get bigger, which is going to cause x1 and x2 to get bigger. And so what we can do is we can put arrows on here to represent the fact that as t changes, you're moving away, moving away from the origin. All right. Now we can go through and do the same thing. Reverse. So we go through and see, let's see, one equals zero. You get x1, x2. That's going to equal c2, negative one, two, times e to the negative t. That produces x1 
equals negative e to the negative t x2. Sorry, there should be a c2 in there. Um, and then 2c2 e to the negative t. All right, we got c2 and 2 and e to the negative t. They're all there. All right, uh, and so now, now to get these two the same, you'd have to multiply the top equation by negative two. So we're gonna have x2 equals negative two x1, right? That would make it so that the, these two are the same, right? If you multiply negative two times negative c2, you'll get positive two c2. All right, and we can go through and graph that. Right, that is the line that goes through the origin that has negative two slope. However, this time, if you go through and change your t values over time, or change your t values, what happens? So if we go through and we make t larger, then you end up with a larger negative exponent. And uh, if, if you make the exponent larger and larger, make it if it's negative and it becomes a larger and larger negative number over time, then it makes then it, then you end up with with a smaller result, right? Because the negative causes you to flip and and then you'd simplify. So as a result, this is going to get instead of getting bigger and bigger over time, like e to the three t does, e to the negative t gets smaller and smaller as t increases. And so that what does that mean? That means that we move toward the origin. All right, and so that represents our second solution. Okay, and this is where things get kind of cool, right? So what are we, what are we, what are we doing here? So we're trying to go through and sketch the behavior of our solutions. All right, if we have a solution that's on this line, then that corresponds to that corresponds to the fact that c two was zero, um, and we know that you move over time. So like if we started here, we would slowly drift away from the origin. Uh, we know that if we start on this line, that represents the case where C1 equals zero. And if we say started here, we would drift toward the origin over time. However, that's not all of the behavior. It's the, the possibilities are not either C2 is zero or C1 is zero. You could have all combinations of the two. Okay, so if we have a combination of the two, if we went through and said, okay, well, C, C1 is two and C2 is three, um, then you wouldn't be on either one of these two lines. You would be somewhere else in space. So what's going to happen? All right, well, what you wanna do is you wanna go through and think about in terms of drawing the behavior of the rest of the, of the curves, um, you wanna think about if you're near this, line here, then this line is going to have the most uh, dominant effect on the way in which your particle moves. If you're near this line, then this line will have the most effect and so on. So if we picked a spot and say, OK, let's say, I, let's say I'm here, right? Uh, so then what curve, what would the curve that goes through that point look like? Well, you want it to be moving in this direction because that point is near that line. So you want it to be moving in that direction. OK, however, um, it's also has this this line here is also going to be pulling on it. And so as you move along, you want to slowly start to move in that direction. You want to slowly start. So anyway, I guess the let me just draw the curve, right? So you're going to do something like this. And if you are further away, then this is going to have less of an effect. And this is also going to have more of an effect. And so it's going to look, I don't know, something like that. And then the same idea over here, if we started here, we would first move in this direction, but then eventually we would move in this direction. So you'd do something like, oops, that last arrow was going the wrong way. Uh, and they should drift toward the line. So let me try that one more time. Like that. And then over here, we would have something like the 
over here. And that's the idea. And so we can go through and see uh, by looking at our, our graph here, this is called a um, phase portrait. And so we can interpret things from the phase portrait. Uh, so if we start off over here in quadrant one, then we're going to end up moving away from the origin. If we start off here in quadrant two, then we're going to end up moving toward the origin and, uh, and so on. OK, um, and so that's, uh, that's the way that you can go through and sketch the behavior. And that's how you go through and solve a system of differential equations with constant coefficients. OK, so a homogeneous one. Uh, so let's go through and try one more example. Just to make sure that you've got the process down. All right, so let's go through and say we've got x prime. That equals negative 3 root 2 root 2 negative 2 times x. We're going to go through and let x equal xi e to the rt. The, OK, and then the consequence of that would be x prime is xi r e to the rt taking those, plugging them in, we're going to have xi r e to the rt equals negative 3 root 2 root 2 negative 2 e to the rt. e to the rt's cancel. Oops, there should be a xi in there. E to the RTs cancel. Uh, and then we can go through and put this into our eigen form. So we're going to negative, negative 3 minus r root 2, root 2, negative 2 minus r times xi equals 0. And then we want the determinant of negative 3 minus r root 2, root 2. Negative 2 minus r equals 0. So we're going to get negative 3 minus r times negative 2 minus r minus 2. Right, so we take this times this minus this times that. Uh, what do we got here? This is going to be r squared. We've got 2r, 3r. We're going to have plus 5r, plus 6 minus 2 equals 0. So we're going to have r squared plus 5r plus 4 equals 0. That's r plus 4. r plus 1 equals 0. We get r equals negative 4 and negative 1. All right. Uh, now we need to go through and find our eigenvectors. So find our xi. Start off with r equals negative 1. Negative 2, root 2, root 2, negative 1. Times i equals 0. You can rewrite this as the augmented matrix, negative 2, root 2, to negative 1 augmented with 0, 0. All right. And then we can multiply by negative 1 half. So we get 1, negative root 2 over 2, 0. And then if you take a negative root 2, multiply it by this, and add it to the second row, you're going to get zeros. And then we're going to have xi 1 minus root 2 over 2 xi 2 equals 0, xi 2 equals xi 2. Oops.
and then we get psi one equal root two over two psi two psi two psi two yeah that one's a little, a little too messy all right and then we're gonna have psi equals root two over two one times xi two. All right, so all multiples of this, since xi two could be anything, all multiples of this will end up getting us our second eigenvector. Okay, so uh, what we can do is we can multiply by, to get rid of the fraction first, we can multiply by two over two. Um, if you do that, then you know this would be equivalent to root two, two, times, and we'll pick a different letter, okay? And then on top of that, what you can do is this bottom guy, this, this two here is root two times root two. And so we actually could divide this by root two. And if you divide it top and bottom by root two, you'll get one root two, which is even simpler than this because it's got a one in it instead of a two. And, uh, a w or something. All right, and so then our first solution equals one root two times e with a negative t. All right, let's go ahead and grab the other solution. R equals negative four. one root two root two two times psi equals zero turn this into the augmented matrix all right you take this, multiply by negative root two and add it to this, you're gonna get an all zero row. You've got one root two, zero, 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 zero. Then we can translate this. This is psi one plus root two psi two equals zero. And for our all zero row, we've got our free variable psi two equals psi two. Turn this into xi1 equals negative root 2, xi2, xi2 equals xi2, and then xi equals negative root 2, 1 times xi2. All right, and so that's as uh, simple as it gets. And so that's gonna be our second solution, x2 equals negative root two, one times e to the negative 40. Okay, uh, we can combine those to get uh, our general solution format. So say x, equals C1 times the first one, which, what is it? One root two, and then got the negative. And then second one, what is it? Negative root two, one. Got the E to the four, negative 14. All right. And then uh, is, that, is that sufficient to get us all of the solutions? Uh, well, you know, what we can do is we can calculate the Ronskin to check. So the Ronskin of x1, x2, that's gonna equal the determinant of the two by two matrix. We gotta take this and multiply it in. So we're gonna have e to the negative t 
root 2 e to the negative t, negative root 2 e to the negative 4t, e to the negative 4t. And so what does that get us? We take this times this. That's going to be e. And we've got negative t, negative t times e to the negative t times e to the negative 4t. You got to add the exponents. So we're going to have e to the negative 5t. Uh, and then uh, minus this times this. So we're going to get a, a double negative there. We've got plus 2e to the negative 5t. And so this equals 3e to the negative 5t, which is not equal to 0. And so we do have, uh, there's enough difference between these two solutions there. These two solutions are linearly independent. Uh, there's enough difference between these two solutions that we will get all of the solutions. All right, and then finally, we can go through and graph our sketch. Draw our x2, x1 plane. All right, so we can go ahead and let c2 equal 0. And then in that case, we're going to get Uh, C2 is zero, we're just going to get this guy here. So we'll have, we want to write that out. So we'll have x1, x2 equals C1 times one root over root two e to the negative t. And so this tells us that x1 equals c1 e to the negative t, x2 equals root 2 c1 e to the negative t. And so we want these to be the same. So we can multiply top and bottom, or sorry, multiply this first equation by root 2, and that will make it so that you'll have root 2 c1 e to the negative t. Uh, that will make these the same. And then we'll have a root 2 x1 equals x2. All right, uh, and so to go through and graph that, we've got a slope of root two. So you want to go up root two, then go over one, this point, and then we'll have our line. That line represents x1. And since we have a negative exponent, we know that points are moving toward the origin. All right, uh, let's go through and do the same thing. Let C1 equal zero. Then you'll have X1, X2 equals C2. And then I already forgot what it is. Uh, it's negative root two, one times E to the negative four T, right? Yep. And so we're going to get x1 equals negative root 2 c2 e to the negative 4t. And then x2 equals c2 e to the negative 4t. So this time, it's easier to multiply the second one by negative root 2 to make them the same. And we're going to get x1 equals negative root 2 x2. Right? If you multiply this by negative root 2, it would make it the same. And so if you multiply this by negative root 2, you've got to multiply this by negative root 2, and negative root 2 times x2 equals x1. And then uh, to go through and put it into our, uh, graph, our line graphing format, we want to get x2 by itself. So we'll have negative 1 over root 2 x1 equals x2. And so that's going to be our line format. So what it's saying, so we want to go down one. So take this distance, go down that distance. And then we want to go right root two. So take this distance, you want to go right that distance. There's your point. And then we want to draw a line through those two points. And 
Okay, these lines are negative reciprocal, so it should be a 90 degree angle if you've done a good job there. All right, uh, and then we've got negative. This is also negative, and so it's all, we also have points moving toward the origin. All right, and so now the question is, how do you go through and graph the how do you go through and graph the curves when when you have the lines going in the same direction? All right, so the idea is still the same in that you want to think about when you're near this one being dominant by this one, uh, and the same thing for this. But uh, it's a little bit more complicated because of the fact. Oh, I, I'm sorry. This is supposed to be the second solution. Uh, so, and just to be clear here, just like I did the with the first time. You, you could have points that are on this line. Those would represent where uh, C2 is zero. And you could have points that are on this line that would represent where C1 is zero. The question is if we have C1 and C2 where they're both not zero, then you're gonna end up here or here or here or here. So what's the behavior gonna be like, okay? Well, so the, the, the idea is this still the same, that you wanna be dominated, uh, but you wanna be dominated, that sounds bad. Uh, that you, that then in terms of the movement, you wanna think about uh, which line you're closer to. However, uh, another factor, there's kind of two factors that, that you wanna take care of. And that is, you wanna look at the relative strength of the two lines, right? in, in terms of, like if you thought about in terms of fluid flow, which one is, which one is moving quicker or stronger toward the origin. And the one that has the negative four is going to be the stronger of the two. Uh, that's X2. So as you go through an increased T, this one is going to move much faster toward the origin. So in terms of flow, it's like you've got a much faster flow along this axis than you do along this axis. So points along here are slowly moving toward the origin where points here are, move, are quickly moving, right? And so if you think about it that way, like if we had a point here, all right, for, it's closer to this one, first of all, so it's going to move in this direction, but this is also the stronger of the two. And so you really want to combine, have do something like this. So it's not until it gets really close to this other one is, are you going to really feel the effects of that? Um, and then, and then even out here, right? So you're kind of equal distance, but this is the stronger of the two. So you should still kind of move, drift in that direction. Anyway, you want to do something like this. And then the same thing over here. And then the opposite over here. All right, and so you're curve should look something, you know, your curve should look something like that. So the, the general direction of them, you know, should be more this more along this axis, more this way, more, you know, than it should be this way, unless you're, unless you're close to, unless you're close to this line, in which case then this line will, will be predominant. Um, so anyway, that's the idea. Um, maybe you could exaggerate this a little bit more by doing something like this. Something like that. All right. Um, so anyway, that's the idea. And uh, that's pretty much the video. The only other scenario that we didn't cover. So we did cover the first example covered where you had two different eigenvalues and they had different signs. This one covers where they have the same sign and they're negative. So the only, only type we didn't cover is where they, you've got uh, the same sign and they're both positive. If you have the same sign and they're both positive, it's just the reverse of this. Okay, so if this were a positive four and a positive one, then it would look just like this, but the arrows would just be in the opposite direction. Okay, so I think you can figure that out. Um, it's exactly the same, just with the opposite arrows. All right, um, and so that hopefully is sufficient that it covers that last possibility. And so you know, how, know what to do in each of the different scenarios. And that concludes the video. So that, so that takes care of our uh, solving homogeneous systems of differential equations with constant coefficients where we have two different eigenvalues. Uh, in future videos, we will cover the scenarios where we have the same eigenvalue and where, where, where we have complex conjugate eigenvalues. 
All right. And then that's the video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.